If you study the exponential growth of Chinese economy, you would find that one factor that played a very crucial role in China's growth is their infrastructure. It is the infrastructure that laid the foundation for China to become the manufacturer for the world. On the other side, if you look at the Indian economy, we did exceptionally well in sectors like IT, banking, even pharma, but always lagged in the manufacturing sector. And one of the key reasons was the lack of good infrastructure. You can't expect the economy to prosper without top class airports, ports, road network, railway network, telecom network, then logistics and power production. That's where one sector that has been the prime focus of Indian government is infrastructure. Indian government has done massive capex across infrastructure sector that include your power transmission, clean energy, railways, telecom, logistics, water, data center, green energy and so on. On top of this, Indian government has a lot of focus on Make in India and Atmanirbhar Bharat. All these investments have set a very strong foundation not just for a few years, but it has created a decadal growth opportunity for the entire infrastructure sector of India. Hey everyone, my name is Sahil and this is my Personal Finance Academy. With the government focus on infrastructure building, there is no doubt that infrastructure is a decadal theme in India. So in this video, I have highlighted the capex plan of Indian government across top sectors within infra theme. That include your power transmission, railway, water, logistics, telecom, data center and green energy sector. And then I have discussed how you can invest your money to benefit from this decadal theme. But before you begin, please note that this video is only for educational purpose. Please do your research before investing your money. Alright, let's get started. So first major capex area within infra theme is logistics. To improve the logistics, government has launched PM Gati Shakti plan worth 100 lakh crore rupees with a goal to bring down logistic cost in India. It includes development of road network by expanding and improving national highways and expressways, development of dedicated freight corridors, high-speed rail projects, development of new airports, modernization of ports, and improving road and rail connectivity to ports for efficient cargo movement. Then government has planned to develop multimodal logistic parks to facilitate efficient good movement and storage. The next Indian government has a massive plan to generate power from renewable source. The goal is to increase power production capacity from renewable source from 166 gigawatt currently to 537 gigawatt by FI30. That's more than three times target. It itself shows how massive the potential is. To achieve these goals, a transmission line has to be established before renewable energy capacity gets commissioned. And that's where government has massive plan to set up transition line worth rupees 2.4 lakh crore rupees. The next area of capex within infra theme is railway. As we are all aware, there's a significant capex in railway theme across modernization of railway infrastructure, including your innovative wagon design, ramping up of locomotive demand, awarding more contracts for manufacturing high-end passenger trains such as Vande Bharat, then inviting private sector participation in wagon manufacturing as well as expanding the nationwide metro network in the country. In addition to this, there is a planned installation of Kavach alongside the entire railway network of nearly 68,500 km route. As per National Rail Plan, investment worth 16.9 trillion rupees needed to ramp up high-speed rail network and increase coaches and locomotive capacity. That's again a massive investment plan. Next area of CapEx is water sector. There are still millions of people in rural part of India who don't get clean drinking water and do not have access to proper sanitation. That's where Indian government has launched Jal Jeevan mission with objective to provide clean water in every household, school, Anganwadi, healthcare center and requires huge infrastructure right from cleaning the polluted water of rivers to supplying water to every part of the country. Government had a capex of 3.6 lakh crore for this mission for a period of 5 years. Out of this, 1.4 lakh crore has already been spent between FI 20 to 30 and remaining amount is expected to be spent over the next 1 to 2 years. The next capex area is data center. Due to the fast adoption of technology and growing digitization from massive growth of internet usage and rise of technologies like AI, IoT, big data, it has resulted in huge amount of data generation. And this data generation is only going to explode with new technologies like 5G. Now this data has to be stored somewhere and Indian government wants this data to be stored within India. And that's where there's a huge potential in data centers with hyperscalers that store and process the data. As per Chris's report, India's current data center capacity stands at around 890 megawatt and is expected to reach 1700 to 1800 megawatt by FR25. 
the value of Indian data center market is expected to increase from $4.35 billion in 2021 to $10 billion by 2025 at a kegger of 15% uh, between 22 to 25. Some of the biggest growth drivers include government initiatives such as keeping 75% of data inside the nation, then giving uh, infrastructure status to data centers, then SEZ classification for cloud data centers along with your free land, water and power. Now data centers would again require a big infrastructure around your high computing devices, uninterrupted power supply, HVAC that is heating, ventilation and air conditioning, then security system, building automation system, switch gear, cables and wires and so on. The next capex area is green investment. As discussed before, Indian government has massive plan to generate power from renewable source. The goal is to increase power from renewable sources from your 166 gigawatt to 537 gigawatt by FI30. This would involve renewable energy capacity addition across your solar, wind and hydrogen along with investment in power grids, battery charging infrastructure, smart metering, ethanol blending and so on. So there are multiple sources of renewable power generation. As per Crystal estimate, India has spent around 5.7 trillion rupee on green investment in industrial and infrastructure category. This amount is estimated to grow four times by FI 30 in order to comply with your COP27 targets. There's already a significant investment towards green energy technology including green hydrogen that would start yielding result in the next three to five years. The next capex area is urban infrastructure. Indian government has implemented several initiatives to enhance the urban infrastructure focusing on sustainability, smart solution and improved living condition. It includes development of smart cities that include your smart transportation system, intelligent traffic management, improving basic urban infrastructure in cities that include your water supply, sewerage, drainage and green spaces. So all these initiatives would directly benefit companies involved in infrastructure development of the country. Now let us look at the second part of this video, that is how you can invest to benefit from this CAPEX theme. So there are two options to invest in infrastructure theme. First is individual stock investment and second is infrastructure theme based mutual funds. If you offer individual stocks, there's a good list of potential companies across categories within infra theme. For instance, stocks within your transmission capex include your power grid, LNT, KEC, Kalpatru, Tata Projects, and uh, then GTND, uh, Hitachi Energy, ABB, Siemens, then CG Power, Voltem, TRIL, Bharat Bijli, and Power Mac Projects. Then top players to benefit from railway capex include LNT, KEC, Kalpatru, Siemens, ABB, then CG Power, Hitachi Energy, RVNL, Titagar uh, Wagon and Jupiter Wagon. Likewise, key beneficiary of water capex theme include LNT, KEC, Kalpatru, then KNR, PNC, Watek Wabag, NCC and so on. Then top players to benefit from data center theme include your Cummins, ABB, Siemens, then Hitachi Energy, Schneider Electric, then uh, LNT, KEC, Kalpatru, Amber Enterprise, Blue Star and Voltas. Uh, then top players for green energy include your Tata Power, NTPC, uh, Power Grid, ABB, Siemens, Hitachi Energy, Genus Power, Praj Industry, Cummins and Thermax. Then top stocks within uh, road infrastructure include your Ashoka Buildcon, then uh, ITD Cementation, then uh, Dilip Buildcon, uh, PNC Infra, uh, GR Infra, Edge Infra. So there are multiple potential names within each segment of infrastructure theme. The only challenge is, it's very important to track the companies where you invest your money. Plus, you should have a fair idea of valuation before investing your money. That's where your mutual fund comes into picture, where fund manager would take care of investment in infrastructure stocks. So let us look at top mutual funds in infrastructure sector of India. So I have shortlisted the top mutual funds in the infrastructure sector and the top names include your ICICI Prudential Infrastructure Fund that has generated 37.7% return in 3 years and 33.45% return in 5 years and it's on CAGR basis. Next is your SDFC Infrastructure Fund with 37% return in 3 years, 27.9% in 5 years. Next is Nippon India Power and Infra Fund, again uh, excellent performance. Then you have DSP, Bandhan, Franklin, Kotak, uh, Tata Infra, HSBC, SBI, Aditya Billa, UTI Infrastructure. Now let's look at the top performer which is ICIC Potential that has generated very good return over the 3 years as well as 5 year period. So this is the return of ICIC Potential Infrastructure Fund in last 1 year which is 56%. In 3 year it is uh, 33%, 5 year it is 
32.9%. If you scroll down further, you can see all the holdings within this fund. So there are currently 62 stock holding, including the likes of Larson & Tubro, NTPC, ICSA Bank. And then you can see the percentage holding LNT has got highest 6.7% allocation, NTPC with 6.2%, ICSA Bank with 44 followed with HDFC Bank, Kalpatru Projects, Gujarat Gas, NCC, JM Financial, Sri Cement, Novo Covista, then Bajaj Finserve, CESC, Vedanta, Interglobe Aviation, uh, then uh, ONGC, uh, Ratnami Metals, Grasim, uh, and so on and so forth. So you can access this entire list. And uh, then you can also see the breakup. 91.8% is in equity, 6% in cash, and this is the sectoral breakup. Construction has got 25.3% allocation, energy with 21%, financials with 19.2%, metal and mining with 13%, capital goods 11%, service and then others. Apart from this, if you look at other important parameter, it has got an expense ratio of 1.24%, exit load is 1% if redeemed within 15 days. Apart from this, you can also look at the fund manager details. Mr. Ihab Dalwai is the fund manager associated with June 2017 and he's a chartered accountant and uh, he's associated with ICSA Prudential since 2011. Then uh, Sharmila DiMello is uh, another fund manager associated since uh, July 2022 and she is also a CA. Uh, she joined ICSA Prudential AMC in September 2016. Clearly infrastructure is a decadal growth opportunity in India because of heavy investment by Indian government. As discussed, there are multiple sectors within infra theme. Now you can either pick the individual stocks or if you don't want to take the headache of studying the fundamentals and not sure about what to buy and what to sell, you can offer mutual funds that are focused on infrastructure theme. Now tell me in the comments, are you investing in infra stocks? If yes, are you investing in individual stocks or via mutual funds? If you find this video useful, do share it within your circle. I'll see you next video. Till then, take care.